Building an eight-figure brand, part four. If you watched the last video, well, part three was more of a podcast. Part two was posted exactly one week ago. And in that video, we were talking about AOV optimization. So um, upsells, cross-sells, new product lines, potential product lines. So we discussed how we were adding a merge section um, for that one out of 100 customers just to increase that AOV just by a little bit. Um, we also touched on mindset going into it and how there were slight delays with um, some ingredient suppliers and which caused us to push back expected launch date to about mid-March, mid-April. Okay, no big deal. Um, we also touched on energy in marketing, energy in creative, so videos and pictures. How do you give someone energy through your ad creative, through your marketing? I think that was a really interesting segment if you want to go to part two after you watch this and kind of watch the last five minutes to get my thoughts on that. Um, anyway, so since then, it's been about a week and a lot has happened in that week. Okay. Um, so really for four out of the seven days, I was focusing on SEO. Now, if you've been following me or if maybe you know me, I don't have a big background in SEO. I have a background in paid ads, specifically um, meta ads. Okay. As for SEO, I mean, I know the basics, right? So like domain authority in terms of age and linking from higher authority domains and um, keywords, stuff like that. And then a site structure in terms of interlinking and then naming certain files, certain pictures, etc. Just so uh, the search engines know what they're looking at, right? But as for ranking a domain um, with the sole intention of like, okay, I want to be top spot for this keyword. I've never really done that except for my landscaping company. And even then that wasn't really competitive because, you know, I'm trying to rank in Buffalo and there's only 50 or 100 landscaping companies. And out of those 50 or 100, maybe 10% are actually doing something solid online. So I was really competing with five, 10 other companies. So really that's not that impressive. Over these four days that I looked into SEO, I learned a lot in terms of really just being able to research competitors and keywords that are kind of up for grabs easily. And that's kind of what I, I settled on doing. So really what I like about tools like um, Ahrefs or SEMrush, stuff like that, there's no lying. You can look up any website you want and see the estimated monthly traffic or yearly traffic and then see what websites are linking to and from that, that domain, right? And I really love that because you can call people out on their BS. It's legit facts. You can't fake stuff in this industry. All right. So if any of you are watching gurus and they're like, Oh, my brand is doing X amount. All you got to do is look up their website in a tool like that and see, well, sir, you're only getting like 300 monthly visitors. Are you sure your brand is doing seven figures? I mean, that's a complete side tangent, but tools like this, very helpful. Okay. So what is the SEO plan for this brain? I've never really implemented an SEO plan like I want to implement for this brand. Okay. Usually I'm more on the paid ad space and I want to say 98% of my effort will still be towards the paid ads space for this brand. However, I will be attempting to rank for certain easy keywords that are up for grabs. Um, let me give you an example, the keyword pre-workout, right? It's pretty difficult to rank for in the top three as you're competing against GNC, C4, GNC, almost a billion dollar company, if not a billion dollar company, C4, or maybe I'm getting those mixed up, like 30 million value, like these are large companies, okay? Top top search results are those solely. And so to compete for a keyword like that, that is going to take years to rank number one or number two for that, simply because, I mean, they're way better well-known, 
way more lengths, longer age, etc. However, more in-depth terms that are not as searched for, they don't really put an emphasis on it. So where a word like pre-workout might take, take years to rank for with lots of links, etc., a term like best pre-workout for women, well, you would only need a couple of reference domains and you could probably get on top three within like, sorry, six months. Same thing like best pre-workout for men, best pre-workout blank, right? So yeah, pre-workout as a term, maybe it has 30,000 searches monthly. And those other ones that I just listed have a thousand or 2000 searches monthly. But if you just stack a bunch of those little ones, well, you see what I'm getting at. So that's really the goal going into it. I've also been talking to some SEO experts um, in the e-commerce space. So one of them runs an agency. At first he was trying to sell me on his services. And then we kind of just started talking for a couple hours. And really the conclusion, well, I don't know if he would necessarily per se agree with this. The conclusion I came to was with SEO trying to rank for those keywords, you're competing for demand. With paid ads, especially if you have a unique product, you're often creating your own demand. So really, I see those two as pretty different from a marketing, advertising, sales approach, okay? Longer term, you definitely want to be ranking for keywords, right? That's just organic growth. Why not take oppor- take the opportunity of it? But in terms of direct ROI, especially when you're starting out and you're trying to stay lean, trying to stay super profitable so you can invest into more inventory, invest into more marketing and scale, I think paid ads is going to be the way to go for now. However, there will be a slight push for SEO just to see that long-term growth for those easier keywords. Okay, moving on. Um, Yeah, with the SEO, I mean, diving into it pretty deeply, I mean, there will be a blog section. Uh, I have about 15 blog ideas as for what's going to be in there. And literally the headlines the titles are going to be kind of the phrases I'm trying to rank for. Okay. And I'm really excited and interesting to see how that goes. Um, all the social media profiles have been set up already. All of them are linking to the main website. Speaking of the main website. So today I found out that, so I use the shrine thing for all the websites I've ever built, it w- it's always been Shrine. And if you've been around for a couple of years or you're familiar with the dropshipping e-commerce space for a, a bit, you've probably heard of the Shrine theme, right? It's a really common one amongst the dropshippers. So there's three different variations of it. There's like a light, there's a light, uh, and then the normal Shrine theme, and then a pro. So I've been using the the normal one. Okay, I didn't know that there was a pro one. And so I just found out about that. And I'm looking at the features and most likely the website's going to get like a little redesign, a little revamp. I really like some of the features that they're offering on this pro version. Um, So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. We're going to make the website even more better, even optimize it a bit more. Okay. As for the product, um, just spoke to my manufacturer today. We are all set, ready to go. We are waiting for the supplements to come in. They've been shipped already um, with all the approvals, etc. As soon as they come in, our manufacturer is ready to go. Bada bing, bada boom, ship them over to me. Test time, uh, taste test time. And then as long as... so. <sighs> If you were watching my previous videos, you know that this whole thing is like a puzzle, right? I can't order the packaging until I know the dimensions of the product. I can't know the dimensions of the product until I've actually tasted it and made sure it works and it tastes good, right? So because of this, I've been really waiting to test this product that we've developed 
okay, to taste test it. See if maybe we gotta make a larger portion so it doesn't taste so full of supplements. Maybe we can go smaller and save on packaging, right? Those kinds of things. And so I've been putting off on ordering the packaging. And why is that so important? The packaging to me is a big deal. I want it to look the best. I want it to look premium because packaging sells products. Because of this, it has to come from overseas because if you're trying to make something like this in the US, it is gonna cost a fortune, right? Now, because it has to come overseas, well, now we have to ship it to the manufacturer, which is in the US, which is also another important thing for me. I don't wanna move manufacturing overseas, especially, bro, long story short, as soon as I'm able to taste test this and see if we gotta increase, decrease, or if it's good the way it is, we are ordering that packaging to the US. It's gonna take about three weeks, four weeks. And then as soon as that packaging comes, we make the product, bada bing, bada boom, and we are ready to launch. Give me like a week to shoot content and we are off to the races, okay? As for the actual product launch, how am I going about that? So, first things first, Got to get a bunch of content, got to get a bunch of images, etc. Before then, we've already set up the affiliate program um, on our website. So people can go and sign up to be an affiliate right now. But we haven't pushed that out yet. That's actually what I've been working on today. Compiling a list of all the influencers and micro-influencers that we want to shoot UGC content for us and to actually post about us. Um, we're going to get that list to about 3,000, 4,000 emails and then shoot out a mass, um, well-written, copywritten, well-written, copywritten, um, email and see how many people sign up and take us up on that offer. As for offers right now on the actual product page. So I know this is something that a lot of people talk about. Oh, you know, you could do a simple 50% off ending at midnight, right? That's one I've used a lot in the past. You can use a buy one, get one X amount, do a bundle deal, get buy these two things, you get a free gift plus free shipping, right? There's all sorts of things you can do. As of right now, I'm sticking to, you get free shipping if your order is $50 or above and uh, just a just a quantity deal. So you you buy one, you pay this price. You buy two, you get eight percent off or seven percent off. You buy three, you get eighteen percent off. Really to incentivize larger order values per customer. That is the offer that I see working the best with competitors in the space, and that is why I'm going to try it out first. Depending on the take rate, we will adjust accordingly. But obviously, you can't make any adjustments really or concrete adjustments until you actually get data and cold traffic coming to your store and making purchases, abandoning their car and, and seeing what you got going on. So re really, that's, that's the plan here in terms of offers. Um, what else? Oh, the review app. So because I'm taking a more longer term approach with this, I've been doing some research on the best review app. I wanted to see if I could find something that integrates with all platforms. So as soon as someone leaves a review on Amazon, it'll show up on the Shopify store. And as soon as someone leaves a review on eBay, it'll show up in the Shopify store. And as soon as someone leaves a review on TikTok shop, it'll show up in the shop, like just integrate all of them. I was looking for the most trusted review service out there that all these major platforms use and can kind of share. Because up until now, I've been using Lux on Shopify and then Amazon has their own review system. eBay has their own, Google has their own. And yeah, you can import reviews in and out, but it would be a lot easier if they were just all on one platform and that platform was super trusted, right? Um, as of right now, I have not been able to find anything like that. And I'm not sure if anything like that exists. So. If you're watching this somehow and you know an app or a service or a company that does that, please let me know. 
Okay, that's for reviews. What else? Obviously, been looking up more um, creative ideas just as I've seen them, as my mind has talked to them. And I got this really cool one, uh, reached out to one creator. He does like really cool transitions. So I want one like that and feature it in the top. I just, just for myself, because I like those videos. I know, getting emotional in business, what the heck. Anyways, oh, in part three, we were discussing a supplemental business to this brand called Boost With Date. So I think it was the day after, or maybe that day when we recorded it, we created the ads for that business and launched them. And since then, we've actually been getting quite a bit of leads for that. However, after interacting with these people, I'm not sure if it's something that I truly want to do, right? Like, I love that process of creating something and selling people on something. Just the initial rush, seeing how it's going to do is really nice. But when it comes to actually fulfilling and talking to the customers, I definitely want to, want to, want to do the fulfillment and just talking to them. It drains my energy, to be honest. Now from like, a, oh, I'm tired after this phone call, more like, man, this guy's story is really depressing. I don't know if I want to talk to people like this every single day. You catch my drift? Okay. So I would much rather record a video, just post it and have people watch and go as they please. All right, kind of like these videos. <laughs> um, what else, what else? I wish I could share the product with you because then I'd be able to go into so much more detail about this entire process and like more nuanced and granular details about this brand. And I would love to do that for you and with you. However, until we launch this product, I can't do that. I am literally holding myself back with force to not talk about this product. That's how excited I am for it. Um, so yeah, building out that email list today probably will send those emails out in a couple of weeks just because I don't want to do it too early. You know what I mean? You don't want to reach out to someone a couple months before product launch. You, you want to reach out to someone maybe two weeks just because it's it's at the forefront of their mind. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's how we're going with that. And then also messaging on just social media, right? Obviously, when you're a new brand, you don't have any content up, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's hard for people to take you seriously. However, that's okay. We're still working through it. That's why I've been mostly doing it through my own personal account. Another update. So I've actually had the intention and I'll probably do this later this evening, going through and kind of updating my social medias just because I will be reaching out to these creators and my personal brand, my social presence is not that strong just because it's not something I've been focused on these past couple of years. Okay. And so when you're reaching out to an influencer with 200 followers or 3000 followers with barely any pictures. Like my one account has one picture. My other account has some more, but I mean, even then it's definitely not the best presentation. And so I will be updating that, making it more personable, really with the sole intention of just getting more replies and answers to my DMS when I'm messaging these micro influencers and influencers for business purposes. Um, so that's another thing I wanted to mention. If you're going to be messaging like cold outreach to people that make their living on social media, I think it's pretty safe to say you want your social media to be at least in somewhat decent shape as well. Other than that, it's been really fun learning more about SEO and just how much, uh, how much in depth you can get into a certain topic, I find really interesting, right? So let's say you have two people that are saying, yo, I'm really good at building websites, right? And one guy has been doing it for a year and the other guy has been doing it for 20 years, right? One guy does it for local lead gen companies 
and another guy does it for e-commerce brands. Who do you think is better? Right? Same thing. One guy has been doing e-commerce uh, websites for brands for 20 years, and another guy has been doing conversion rate optimization for 10 years for e-commerce brands. Who do you want looking at your product page, your landing page? Most likely this guy, right? Because he actually cares about the results. What kind of sales, what kind of conversions are we getting? Um, so I find it really interesting how you can get super detailed and super specific on a certain area. And really that's kind of what I'm doing here with this brand. I want to get super granular, super specific, super detailed on every single little aspect of this brand, of the website, of the marketing, of the messaging, of the organic content, etc. And because it's just me, that means a lot of my time is going towards each of those. And so, yeah, I mean, really my goal right now is to just become the best e-commerce marketer, website creator, etc. on the internet, right? I know it's might be funny to hear that, but I mean, that's really my goal. I'm trying to learn this skill set to the best of my ability. Like, do I know it? Yeah. Have I generated sales? Sure. Can I make a landing page that converts at five, six percent? Sure. Why not 20? I'm, I'm sure somewhere out there, there's a landing page that converts at 20 percent for a product, for a physical product. I don't know anyone with those kinds of results, but I'm sure there's at least someone out there with those kinds of results. And even if there isn't, I think the fact that I believe that there is makes me push harder and strive harder to be better for it on it, on the skill set. So yeah, that's cold traffic, by the way, not warm traffic, not an email list. Um, okay, what else? So that is pretty much it. I will be updating you in another week. Like, comment, subscribe. Like I always say, especially comment, even if you're watching this in one year, in five years, in 10 years, I wanna see who's watching these videos. It is David Boswitz that was building an eight figure brand part four. I am excited for you to see what product, what brand this is. Hopefully within a month or two, I can do that. See you soon. See you next week. Bye.